before we get started on today's episode, installing an external trans cooler, I want to give you a quick update on installing an oil catch can. Let's take a look and see how that thing is doing after about a thousand miles of running it. If you haven't checked out my episode on the oil catch can, be sure to check that out for full installation instructions. Uh, this is what it is. It's located here. It has, this is a three port model. It has two ports in and one port out back to the intake. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the bottom part and I'm going to see if there's any oil inside of it and I'll show you that. Yep, we definitely have some oil in there. So it is working and one last quick note, I switched out the drain that I had previously installed in this and I put back the original in place, which, which is just a plug. So just so you're aware, I was trying to minimize the smell and it seems to have helped minimize the smell a bit. I guess I'm gonna go back on what I previously installed and say you might wanna just go ahead and install the original plug in the bottom of this. Okay, so there's your update. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into the GS and let's get started with the external trans cooler installation right now. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Ford Momentum. On today's episode, we will be tackling the external transmission cooler. This is a mod that many of you have been asking me to do, so ask and you shall receive. What does an external trans cooler do? It essentially increases the efficiency of your existing system, which happens to be mounted inside your radiator. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna tap the return line to the transmission and further cool that automatic transmission fluid that is going, making its way back to the transmission. That's essentially what these do. You wanna mount these either to the side or straight up. You do not wanna mount them like this. You run the risk of developing some air pockets if you mount them this way. The first step is trying to find a good spot for this thing. That actually is the most difficult part of this installation. Everything else is pretty easy. Let's take a look at the supplies that you're gonna to need to do this job successfully and then we will get in to the mounting location on the Lexus GS400. You're obviously gonna need the trans cooler, some kind of brackets or metal to mount the trans cooler to the location that we decide on. You're gonna need some 3 8 inch hose. I happen to select Hayden 106, that's the part number, and I believe this is like four and a half feet of hose, hopefully that's enough but it's 3 8 inch and it can handle ATF and it has like a 300 degree rating and I think it's like a 300 PSI rating as well. So it should be just fine. You're gonna need some ATF that is specified for your vehicle and we'll probably only need about a quarter of a quart because this will increase our capacity slightly. This here is what's called a, a thermostatic switch and the reason I'll be utilizing this is because in the winter time, you actually can overcool your transmission and it won't work properly. So what this does is it switches at a specified temperature. I wanna say it's 170 degrees and it allows the external cooler to be in use. So these are pretty cool. You can probably purchase a universal kit that will work just fine on this vehicle or maybe you have a different vehicle and that's okay. But the universal kits are generally under a hundred bucks and they come with everything you need except for maybe the fluid. And actually they do come with extra lines. So just the fluid and that's it. So it might be better for your needs to go and purchase one of the universal assemblies. But again, I'll take some measurements here so you can see you know, what size you wanna get. But I know BNM makes a good cooler. Um, as does Hayden and I believe Mishimoto also, but those are pretty expensive. Okay, so let's take a look at the mounting location and let's try to figure this out. How am I gonna get this thing in here and how is it gonna work best? You're gonna have to find some kind of bracket that's gonna work for you and then, you know, mess with it and bend it and just get it to where it works. 
Well, after a few different tries, this is what I ended up with. I had a little bracket going off of here to attach to this. The cooler sits down in here, which isn't ideal because your bumper is blocking some of the airflow, but it still is getting quite a bit of airflow down there. There really isn't a way to get the entire cooler with airflow unless you get a really short skinny one is probably how I should say it. There's really no way with this much bumper to get the entire thing in the airflow. So I think this is gonna be a great location. You can see that there already was a threaded, I, I'm gonna call it an insert in the subframe down here. So I basically rigged up this bracket straight up and down. And from a physics standpoint, this isn't the strongest direction. You would want it facing this way, but that's okay because this, this thing's pretty light. These lines will run in here and around this condenser. I think that's gonna be a great location for it. Which line do you actually need to tap? These are your transmission fluid lines. And this one here is the one that comes out of the OEM cooler and goes back to the transmission. That is the one we want to tap into and provide additional cooling capacity to. Now, worst case scenario is you accidentally tap the input line to the OEM cooler. You're not going to hurt anything. You're going to cool the fluid before it goes into the OEM cooler and comes back around. So there's no way other than fluid leaking that you can really screw this thing up. This is a thermostatic switch, and it's not necessary for this installation, but it is handy. Basically what they do is in the winter time, they prevent too much cooling. You can actually overcool your transmission. You generally want it to be about 170 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the winter time, if you have an external cooler going, you can get it below operating efficiency. This will bypass the external cooler and go right back to the transmission. So if you don't wanna ruin your existing line, which I recommend you do not, just unhook it from the hard line. And if you're gonna use a thermostatic valve like this, <clears throat> you're gonna hook it in where it says flow to controller. And then I'm gonna use the line that I just ran. You can see it down there. And hook it up here. And then the flow to the transmission, which would go back into the hard line, will be through this top part. All right, here we go. ATF is gonna come out of here. Okay, if you just gently use a flathead screwdriver and push on this line, I don't know how much is going to come out of here. I really hope it's not too much. That's not too bad. And then if you hold this upright, it should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and slip that on. Slip that on. Let's see if we can slip this one on as well. <laughs> there we go. That's not going anywhere. Okay, to controller. Here we go. Okay, got that hose clamp on. So this is feeding the external cooler and there's a nice little spot right under here if you guys want to run your lines. Okay, three out of four lines hooked up. Now I need to run the two transmission line back to this hard line right here. I think I'll use this new line that I have. So four and a half feet was perfect for my application. Kind of what it looks like with the thermostatic switch everything's tightened down make sure you go through all of your hoses and lines and connections double and triple check them and make sure they're not riding any sharp edges you do not want an atf leak you blow your transmission out 
I still need to secure that bottom line right there. So I will go ahead and take care of that right now. Two lines run right there by the AC condenser and back through into the thermostatic switch, which then says back to transmission as an additionally cooled fluid and we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this oil that spilled down here. I'm gonna make sure that all the tools are picked up and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna add about a quarter of a quart into the transmission directly in. I recommend using a funnel I think that's pretty much good. Now remember, you need to check the fluid with the engine running. I can tell you right now, I am not too worried about this because I know exactly how much came out of there and I know exactly how much is in that trans cooler. All right, it's all locked. All the tools are clear. I'm gonna go ahead and put the intake on and we'll fire her up. Oh, and don't forget to put your horns back on. Here is a quick recap of the installation of an external trans cooler on the Lexus GS400. This again can be applicable to almost any vehicle with an automatic transmission. All right, first and foremost, let's take a look in here at the return to transmission line. I'm gonna point it out. That is this one here, and that is the one that we will be tapping into. So that returns the cooled fluid back to the transmission. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tap this or intercept it and we are gonna further cool that fluid. So again, mounting location is gonna be one of the top difficulties of this installation if you even wanna call it that. I found that this location is ideal. I do like it because it protects these hoses from rocks flying in through here and potentially up here as well. It doesn't matter which order you do the inlet and outlet. These are unidirectional transmission coolers. Generally, they all are, and they will be marked if they are not. This transmission cooler is 10 inches tall by seven inches wide in this configuration. You only want to mount them to the side or straight up and down. You do not want the inlet and outlet pointing down. Follow the instructions for the cooler that you end up purchasing. Now you can see right down there, those two lines going through the lower side of the condenser and past the radiator, and then they come out on this side. It's gonna be hard to see because we have limited space here. But I'm gonna put my hand down where they come out. They're coming out right here and they're taking a 90 degree turn essentially uh, over to the thermostatic valve that I outlined in my video that I'm utilizing, which helps in the winter time because you can actually overcool your transmission fluid. Again, we talked about that in my video, but if you skipped to this part, make sure you go back and review that section because you really don't want your temperatures getting lower than 170-ish Fahrenheit. So there's my thermostatic valve right down there. This actually is my thermostatic valve or transmission cooler return to transmission line which is hooked up so it's been this line should be the coolest line right here so the fluid has been cooled twice once by the oem cooler which is inside the radiator and once by the external cooler which is the one i installed it goes back into the transmission it's pumped back again in this line so this line goes into the oem cooler so you can see i have some notes this is just this helps me. So I have some notes that I kind of jotted down. Hey look, there's my old pulleys. And in case any of you are wondering what I used to do 
when I was about, I don't know, 18, I built lowrider trucks. <laughs> so this one here made it into a lowrider magazine. All right, all lines have been checked, all connections have been checked, everything is good to go. There are no leaks. guys I took it for its inaugural drive with the external trans cooler in place and it's a very hot day I'm happy to say that I swear I can feel a little bit of a difference in that previously on a hot day the transmission got even a little more sluggish a little more not as snappy snappy I think keeping the trans temps down 10 to 20 degrees certainly could have an impact. Now it's no valve body upgrade like I'm gonna do on one of my next episodes. This is gonna help with longevity and if you can feel a little bit of a difference in hot weather, hey, I'll take it. I'm pretty happy with it. As you saw from the on-car video, it's vibrating a little bit, which I never would have seen if I never would have put the GoPro inside the grill. It doesn't look like it's moving around too much. So that is my initial impression. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and of course, comment. I try to respond to every single one. Appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next episode.